Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's clean and simple card making video. Today I'm going to use these dies to make a couple of cards for you. I've got a basic stitched star die, a basic stitched circle die, a basic rectangle die that's also stitched and a Sizzix scribble die. The first thing I did was die cut all of my shapes out of some smooth white cardstock. I decided to keep the scribble die cut white, but I wanted to colour both the star and the circle. I could have coloured the paper before I die cut the shapes, but today I decided to colour the shapes after I'd cut them. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes you get a slightly different effect when you colour after you've cut, especially if you've got some stitching, because the stitching and the edge of the shape seems to grab a little bit more colour from the bristles of the brush. So to colour my circle, I use chipped sapphire distress oxide, which is a lovely deep indigo reminiscent of a night sky. And I wanted this circle to be dark because I wanted to put a lighter star on top. I did bring in some of my homemade white shimmer spray. This is made with just water and some Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder White Pearl Mixer. I dripped this on with the nozzle. I wasn't getting the kind of blobs that I wanted. So I got a paintbrush, dipped it in some of the shimmer spray and then splattered it on and left that to dry. Next, I painted on some very pale gold metallic paint onto my star and set that aside to dry. And finally, I took the scribble die cut and spritzed on some of the white shimmer spray. So it's still white, but it is shimmery now. Once everything was dry, it was time to assemble the card. So I used matte gel medium to glue the scribble die down to a rectangular stitched panel of linen textured cardstock. I used matte gel medium for this because I knew some of the glue was probably going to splurge out of the sides and I didn't want it to show. Matte gel medium dries clear but it also dries matte so you don't get any glossy smears if glue does seep out from under your die cut. So I popped that about a third of the way down the panel hanging off the left hand side. I then snipped off the overhang and pressed it down with some non-stick paper just to make sure that everything was in good contact with the panel below. I then added some very thin craft foam to the top and bottom of my circle and also added some high tack PVA in between where the circle was going to come in contact with the die cut below and then I placed this over that die cut. I positioned the circle in a certain way with that large blob of shimmer in the top left hand corner because I didn't particularly like that large blob and I wanted to use the star to cover it up and I wanted the star in the top left hand corner. I decided to double up my star to give it a bit of extra thickness so I just cut another one from smooth white cardstock and stuck it down. I then stuck the double star over that big blob in the top left hand corner of the circle. Again I used matte gel medium in case any splurged out. To make sure my star was straight on the card I used my T-square ruler to line it up and I did add a little bit of foam tape underneath the top point of the star where it was hanging over the circle just to make sure that didn't get caught and lifted and it just stayed in place. I then used tape runner to stick my panel to my card blank which I trimmed down with my guillotine. For my sentiment I chose a you're the best stamp and I stamped that in chipped sapphire onto some smooth white card which I then die cut out using the small stitched rectangle die. The die was obviously too long for this particular sentiment but it's fairly easy to deal with that. Just cut your sentiment out as is and then shuffle the die cut along the die locking the teeth in place if it's a stitched die cut. Hold it still with a bit of washi, pop it in the end of your cutting plate or cutting folder, whatever die cutting machine you're using, and then run it through your die cutting machine and it should chop off that end and make it perfectly matched with the other end. I added some matte gel medium again to the back of this and a couple of pieces of foam tape. I overlapped it with the star and the circle, placing it in the middle of the carve horizontally. And then as a finishing touch, I added some 
gold nouveau drops and that was this card finished right hang around for a couple more minutes and i'll show you some more cards i've made with this design idea in mind so slight variation i'm going to use some ribbon now this is ribbon that i've literally just cut off a new t-shirt that i bought it's the bit that goes in the shoulder that holds it onto the hanger in the shop but they always get in the way, so I always trim them off and I'm just going to use them today. So I've drawn a horizontal strip there and I'm going to take some tape runner, run it along the ribbon. And I've turned it into basically fabric washi tape and I can stick that on there, wrap it around the back. I'm going to do the same with this one. Not going to bother with a pencil line this time because I think I can line it up like that. And that can flip around the back. And now I can put my star and my circle in some kind of arrangement like that. And I'll finish that off in a tick. In a similar vein, you could use thread or string or twine. And I've got some really fine gold thread here. I'm going to stick it to the back of my card panel. And I'm just wrapping that around there like that, building up a layer so it stands out. If you like, you could try and get them all lined up straight, but I quite like having the crisscrossy look just to make sure it's extra extra secure just pop a load of washi tape over the back there and now i could add my start and circle however i wanted there you could also run a piece of card through an embossing folder this one's got stars snowflakes and dots which again i think are meant to be snow it's got a lovely pattern on there now and i'm gonna Cut it to about, what's the size of that one that we used? So that's the right width or depth, depending on which way you look at it. To make it look as if it's been die cut, I can run this embossing tool along the edge. Add some tape runner or some glue to the back. Line that up. So it's straight and then snip off the overhang with scissors or a trimmer or a guillotine. And there you have a little bit of an embossed panel behind your circle and stars. So I've got three more circles to make for my three extra cards and I'm going to colour them in different ways. So I'm going to smush with chipped sapphire. But I've made my paint with the ink and that Cosmic Shimmer homemade spray. And I'm going to pick up my smusher. So this should be nice and shimmery. Dry that and then do another layer. So that's dry. We'll do another layer of smushing on top. So there's my lovely shimmery chipped sapphire circle. Now I've got some more chipped sapphire and more DIY shimmer spray. And I'm going to pick it up with a paintbrush and dry brush it and dry brush it across like that. Get some streakiness, just something a little bit different. This time I'm just going to splatter like crazy over this again with the shimmery chip sapphire. When splattering, if you use a big paintbrush with lots of water, you're going to get big splats. If you use a smaller paintbrush with less water or ink or whatever, then you'll get smaller splats. So I'm going to dry that and then do another layer. So now it's time to colour my stars in some way. Oops, slightly more than I wanted. But with this, I just wanted to put some Nouveau drops in pale gold and just smear it over that really to get a bit of texture and colour and shimmer and shine. Put that aside to dry, that might take a little bit of time. 
I'm going to get my splatter on again and use the pale gold metallic paint, which doesn't seem to want to splat. Dry that and splatter again. So that's that one done. Looks rather nice. And to finish off on my last star, I'm going to just add a bit of glitter paste. Might be better to paste up a piece of card and then die cut from it once it's all dry. But I'm not really looking for a perfect solid pasting. In fact, I'm going to give it some texture by tapping with the palette knife. Hang on. Hold it down with my tweezers and just create a little bit of texture. And that's got to be set aside to dry now. Right, I'm going to add my circles now. I think I'll add the splattery circle to this solid ribbon background because I think that's a nice contrast between the splatters and the solid. This I think I'm going to put on there because I don't want two lots of thin lines as it were on the same card and that one I think works well on there. This one I'm going to put over to the right and hang it off the page because I needed to straighten this and when I did I managed to rip the panel and rather than start again I'm just going to cover it up because you can always cover it up. So I've just pulled the last bit of foam tape off my roll and this bit has got cardboard stuck to it from the roll. Not going to waste it though. I can just put some glue on my circle and add the tape non-sticky side down onto the glue. It might wriggle around a bit, it's not going to have the same grip until it's dried. Take the release paper off and then place this on here. I think I'll go central. Now that should stick in place. I'll do the same with this one. I'm going to stick those on their card blanks and then decide where to put my stars. With this one, I've actually decided to flip it the other way up and have it down the bottom coming in from the left, just for a change. So I think the splattery circle needs a solid star. The smush circle can get a splattered star and a dry brush circle can get the glitter star. I'm not gonna put those up on another layer. I think they're fine as is. So I've created myself a little jig I've used that stitched rectangle to cut out a sentiment piece. I'm going to pop that back in there, treat it with corn flour so I can do some heat embossing. I've lined up my stamp so it perfectly aligns with my rectangle. For this one, I'm going to stamp it in chip sapphire again. Because Distress oxides contain pigment. They do stay wet a bit longer than dye inks, so they will grab onto embossing powder. So I've dipped that in clear embossing powder. So I should get a chipped sapphire glossy sentiment. I'm going to repeat that process using sticky embossing ink. This is my really mucky ink pad. It doesn't matter because I'm going to use gold. There we go. And for this last one, I'm going to stamp it in black and then heat emboss it with clear because I'm thinking the one with the ribbon on needs a really bold, dark sentiment to help it stand out. Right, so that's the one with the chip sapphire and the embossing, maybe on there. That's the one with the gold heat embossing. And that's the one with the black heat embossing. This one I'm going to put over the middle of the star so it sits in the middle of the card like that. With this one and the previous one I'm putting some foam squares on the back. As everything on this one is centralised I am going to stick with that idea. Pop that over there. This one I'm going to pop here. So it sits off centre like the rest of the design. It does need a little bit of extra foam under there because there's quite a lot of chunkiness underneath it. And I'm thinking a few Novi drops on this one. One, two, 
three, four, five, to follow the circle round, I think. One, two, three, four, five there. And that'll do. And this one, following the circle again, excuse the aeroplane flying overhead, but on the outside of the circle. So there you go, four different cards made using more or less the same suppliers, the same design idea, but with a few tweaks here and there for a different result each time. Let me know in the comments which one of these designs you prefer, maybe which one you want to have a go at. If you do have a go at any of the cards you see here, come along to my Facebook group, share some pics, because we'd all love to see them. It's a really lovely, supportive group, and you'll be very welcome. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.